Welcome back, Knockoff Nation. A special little Saturday edition here of the podcast, joined by uh, regulars Chris and Danny. Uh, somewhat of a groundbreaking episode of the Knockoff Podcast. We're 12 months into our stint here uh, doing this, and we've landed our first UFC fighter is on the books. Ben Wynn. Ben Ten is in the house. Thank you very much for joining us, Ben. <laughs> wow, that's a surprise. That's a, I did not know it was the first UFC fighter. It's a, it's a, right. a, a wow. groundbreaking day. We, as we thank all of our guests for their time, but... As always, thank you to you as well. Ben has brought uh, his wife. April is with him today. April, that's right. Is a uh, th- thank you for your time as well. Uh, out of your busy schedule, you've just mentioned off air that you're looking after the Eastside Boxing Gym in a caretaker role for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, basically, our head coach and one of our other coaches, who's also a professional fighter, Mark Flanagan, he's actually fighting for a world title this Sunday in Russia. Ooh. So that's where yeah. all our coaches are at the moment. So. Um, I'll be uh, staying tuned Monday morning at 3 a.m. to watch that fight. Wow. And um, hopefully we get another Aussie with a world title. Right on. And where, whereabouts in Russia is that going down? Oh, goodness, I cannot pronounce oh, yeah. the name <laughs> yeah. of yeah. this good city. Luck with that that Russian yeah. geography. Yeah. Yeah. It's not Moscow. Right. Um, and is it, yeah. is it a Russian that he's fighting? He, yes, it yeah. certainly is. Ooh, yeah, damn. So. Those Russians <laughs> love their combat sports too. Like mm-hmm. There was a uh, uh, an article that came out during the week about Conor McGregor wanting to fight... Uh, uh, Nurmagomedov in in Russia. How big would that be? That'd be insane. Wow. Yeah, but you you guys are obviously uh, a combat sports couple, which is uh, which is pretty pretty <laughs> unique. You'd have to say. Did yeah. did you guys meet uh, through combat sports in general, or did you meet outside of like in the gym type thing? Or yeah, so um, I was living in Thailand, so I'm originally American. Yeah, I moved to Thailand because uh, I got opportunity to train at one of the camps there. I had Tiger Muay Thai. And, Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah, basically, I met my wife on training camp at Tiger Muay Thai. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I followed her back here. That's yeah. why I live in Brisbane now. Excellent. And so you were training out of Tiger Muay Thai yeah, at the same I, time? I was training Muay Thai at the time. Yeah. So um, I went there for a month and uh, ran, in t- ran into this guy. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, we started training together and it kind of just went from there. Fantastic. And that, that, is, that is the... the for anyone that doesn't know, is pretty much the the premier Muay Thai gym in Thailand, is it? I mean, they've got an AKA over there these days, but... Yeah, there's a lot of gyms up there, and um, that's probably one of the biggest gyms yeah. and well most known. well-known one, yeah. Yeah, right on. That have You'd have to think they'd have some killers over mm. there. In terms of doing a training camp in Muay Thai, I mean, no better spot yeah. in the world to probably learn than, than Thailand. Not, not only in Muay Thai, but they have a really good MMA team out there. And really? That's why I was out there, was for the MMA. And I actually learned a lot more grappling techniques. Really? Like my wrestling, my grappling got a lot better when I went over to so Thai, Thailand. W- why is it, if, you know, in your guys' opinion, I suppose, why is it that you don't see more Thai people that, that are probably coming through the MMA mm. ranks or is that sort of, you know, something that, that we're going to see in coming years or? Yeah, so you, you will see it. Uh, they just passed a law, I think the year or two ago, to allow MMA uh, in Thailand uh, and because it was, it, was, um, it was actually banned for a long really? time because uh, they didn't want it to compete with the Muay Thai. So, um, yeah, you've seen a lot of, a lot of Thais... Uh, retired and still fighting Thai Thai boxing, they're they're, they're just starting to jump into to MMA and like, wow. they're doing great. Yeah, uh, I, um, I um actually got a chance to to train with a few world champion like really top level Thai guys, and they're training for MMA fights and stuff. Oh. And they were just like I was really surprised by how well they can wrestle and really and, um, grapple. And, oh, yeah. that's a scary proposition, scary, you know. Yeah. Like you you watch those. <clears throat> like I suppose the the more well known guys like your Borkows and and all that sort of stuff. I mean to to think about having those guys in a in a cage and I mean John Wayne Parr really has has pioneered that sort of um, what is it like? He's got cage, cage Muay Thai. Cage is his Muay Thai is his sort of thing. Yeah, and they they do they still do that on the Goldie? He yeah, does still yeah. host events. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, awesome, yeah, man. yeah. I love it. Have you been? I haven't been to it. No, I watched neither. it on the stream like uh, a couple times, and it's I think I love the idea. It's, yeah, it's so entertaining. And and April the the. I presume that there would be a really big contingent of women in Thailand who would just be murderers, absolute oh, murderers. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Women love their Muay Thai. Yeah. And I think being women as well, we tend to pick up martial arts quite fast and quite quickly. So 
I guess um, the differences between male and female, I mean, a lot of women, they're a lot more technical. They're less aggressive. Right. So they really like to hone in on their skill. But, yeah, plenty of women killers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I guess that would probably – is that why you travelled there to do, to do the camp there is really to, you know, that oh, depth of yeah. sort of talent and all that sort of stuff? 100%. I guess um, – Training in Thailand, you do get that in-depth skill. You get to learn straight from the Thais. I mean, they're the best at it. They've been training since they've been – they were seven years old. Mm. Pretty much as soon as they're born, they're straight into a training exactly, camp. Yeah. So um, just wanted to learn from the best so I can um, hone in on my own skill. And so you're from Brisbane originally? I am, yeah. And, um, and how old were you when you went to Thailand? Um, oh, well, I've been there a couple of times. Uh, the first time I went over, I was probably – Gosh, it's a long time ago now. Yeah, so yeah. about 19, 20, 20 years old. Okay. Yeah, so that's the first time I went. But um, I was 24. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. She's, she's looking at Ben for confirmation. Wanna, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to give away my age. <laughs> no, yeah. So last year, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> it. We, we just met. Yeah. Yeah. Right on, right on. And so Dakota? Is that Sa- where you're South from? Dakota. South so there's Dakota. North and South Dakota. And, and forgive my horrible geography of the United <laughs> States, but wh- whereabouts does that sit? Uh, so it's in the northern center part of northern center of, part of uh, United yep. St- States. So, so it's, it's bordered by like Michigan and something uh, else. No, oh, it's c- closer there. So it's bordered with Minnesota, Iowa, and Nebraska, right, and right, North right. Dakota. Oh. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Would it be safe? To, is that like? The really cold region, like Super all through there. Super cold. Yeah, we have one yeah. of the. We have a city. It's uh, it's called Watertown for some reason. Um, it's the one of the coldest cities. I think it's like top five coldest cities in the United States, Damn. Yeah, including right. Alaska as well. Right. Right. You, you'd be loving that Southeast Queensland weather, man. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I love it. I love. It. I'm, I can't go back. Like yeah. it's winter. It's yeah. just so cold. Just you, the wind cuts you. Do you have family back that way? Yeah, still? all my family still lives out yeah, there. Yeah, and so. you get back and visit them at all? Yeah, I'm actually going um, in a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. nice. I go back every year or so just yep. to see family and stuff and catch up with friends and old training partners. Right. Have they right. come out to Brisbane yet to visit? Not yet. Here? Not, not yet. yet. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to get them out there. Cool. cool. But um, once once they come out there, they they are not. Really <laughs> <back>. <laughs> you lose that buffer zone, dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what, what what's what's the town like? Uh, I suppose that that you're from originally. Yeah. You know, like what what is that? Oh, uh, it's like? it's a town about 150,000. It's not that big, so it's like a suburb of Brisbane. Yeah. Um, and it's that's the biggest city in the entire state. So the entire state right. has less than a million people in it. Oh. Okay. And it's just full of country towns and stuff, but ours is the biggest one. Um, people are really nice. You know, um, uh, people, yeah, will just go out of their way to help you. It's very, very much like uh, Queensland or Australia. Yeah. In general, I feel like people here, you know, they, they'll take more time out of their day to like chat to you and stuff. Same as over there, like just that Midwestern. Yeah. Cool. Midwestern hospitality. Yeah. Yeah. Is there yeah. much of a mixed martial arts scene in Sioux Falls these days uh, in that region? No, nah, kind of. I mean, there's one gym there. Uh, it's starting to grow and grow. Um, you know, they just had their first UFC fight in in South Dakota like last year. It, but um, yeah, and I had I got the opportunity to fight on that one. That was awesome, man. Oh, yeah. I had no, I would never have dreamed that. UFC would come to that town. Like yeah, crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, but um, yeah, I got to fight on it. Uh, unfortunately, I lost, but you know, it was, it was fun. It yeah, was definitely having that. Do, do do your family come along and watch you? They did actually. Um, I found out that my mom and my mom in law. Yeah, um, my I was mom. over there as well oh, for the first oh, time. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. and my mom came along and um. Yeah, our mothers snuck in. Snuck in. Yeah. <laughs> snuck in. They didn't even <laughs> tell you that they were going to be there. That's right. Didn't, oh, yeah, sure. they, didn't, they didn't even have tickets. They right. <laughs> 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 they I jumped the fence. I UFC. <laughs> <laughs> jumped the fence. Yeah. <laughs> and so is that something that uh, – do you guys, with obviously both being fighters, do you guys go to – each other's fights, or is that something that you you don't like to be in? You know, you'd, yeah. you'd like to steer clear from, or yeah, we we actually go to every fight that uh, that um, we have. Uh, I think my last UFC fight in Auckland uh, was the, the very first, the only fight that she couldn't come to because she had the fight the day before. Wrong. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 I mean, sometimes um, we it's happened more than once where we both fight on the same weekend or even on the same show. Actually, we fight on the same show. Um, it was a Muay Thai MMA. 
uh, card in oh. um, where what was it? Uh, Eden's Hill Eden's Hotel. Hill, yeah. Ah, Eden's okay. Hill Hotel, and um, she we were fighting back to back. So she fought, knocked out her opponent, and you know I was coming out. She was she was going back into the change room, and I'm kind of like kind of high fived. Yeah. yeah, really. And I went out there, won my fight, and then you know we oh, went home. Oh, that's and so had a good. Time. good. Yeah, it was fun. that's so good. Especially, I suppose being able to be in a fight camp together, you know, like of sort of going through the same motions at the same times, cutting weight together, you know, that that sort of dynamic. Would that be, I guess there's probably like a helpful and a hindrance sort of like part of that or you just, just, just the helpful part? I think it helps a lot. Yeah. We kind yeah. of understand what we're going through. I think the only time that it's um, a bit of a hindrance is when we have different... Um, we're at different stages of our fight camp. That's when it's a little bit difficult. Right. Where he'd yeah. be cutting in his last week and I'll still be in the middle of my training camp and he's angry from cutting weight because he can't <laughs> eat anything. <laughs> She's making donuts and I can't have any. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Thanks, babe. Thanks for making donuts oh, on fight week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got, a, got a cabanara <laughs> cooking up in the kitchen. Yeah. Like <laughs> and I was watching um, some of your YouTube, some of the videos of you guys on YouTube last night. I think I saw an interview maybe with Ben where you were saying you guys like spar against each other as well. Is that sort of like a... Yeah, we have a, in, the, in the past. A catharsis stuff. for your relationship sometimes. Yeah. Like, to be able to <laughs> throw it, out. it can get a bit heated. <laughs> it's a bit heated, and uh, yeah, it's and cool. April, you you would, I'm sure, like have numerous occasions where you would probably have to spar guys. Would you? Oh, a hundred percent. There's not very many women um, well, training to begin with, so. Um, yeah, sometimes you just have to get in there and have a good spar with the boys. But the boys are pretty good. They'll they'll ma- try and match your level. They never go out of hand. So there's that respect there, yeah. which is awesome. And and they say too that obviously the you, you're far always you know far safer I suppose with somebody who's got a, a high skill level you know to spar than I guess some clown who's just in there yeah. swinging bolos looking to those sort of people end up getting greenlit in gyms too yeah. where it's like hey uh, s- send someone in to look after him like, yeah that, that <laughs> won't happen for, that, for long that happens and i try to avoid people like that like yeah. i uh, like you kind of get that look and you're just like, uh, like <laughs> do i need to put this guy <laughs> in his place yeah. yeah yeah or um yeah or avoid him completely because yeah just, like, if i mean it just depends on like where i'm at in my camp like i'm getting close to a fight i probably won't I won't touch anyone that yeah. I haven't worked with before. And and how much in a gym environment, you know, like n- none of us have obviously, none of us train, just absolute, you know, uh, fans to the core, I suppose. But how much ego floats around a gym typically? Does it does it vary person to person? Is it, you know, like a very chilled environment? Like what, what's it sort of like? Well, in fighting sports in general, man, it's just, you know, one-on-one, the ego's, ego's like a huge, huge thing in – Man, uh, it. I think I think um, you get you get a lot more people with those egos, especially because of that one on one thing. You know, it's it's just it's it's them, it's them against you, and they've they've got they've got to prove that they 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 can either stand or yeah. they're better than you. So right. it, like they sometimes they forget like the gym is just for training, um, not not competition, and they get out of hand and yeah. But you pick those people out really quickly. Right. You know? And does it ever, do things ever boil over? Like, have you ever, you know, in a, in a gym witnessed something where, hey, man, we were supposed to be going 50%, like, what the fuck, all you know? The and time. then, yeah, yeah. All the time. yeah true. I see it all the time. And I've actually seen it with, like, my, my training mates, and, and we've, we've gotten to, like, some, some pretty, pretty um, serious sparring matches, but, like, afterwards, when, you know, we're having a beer. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's good. Yeah. I think John uh, John Jones made reference of that too, where at, at Jackson's, where they'll have, you know, he'll he'll go to, he keeps his training group really really tight now for that very reason, where there's a bunch of people down there who want to come in and say that oh, I landed a big right hand on John Jones, or mm. and a lot, same thing afterwards where people are like oh, you know, can I, can I get a photo with, at the gym, John? He's like, no, you have to earn that right to get the photo with me, otherwise it's up on Instagram. Yeah, down at Jackson's training with the champ, and yeah, so and that's the ego involved with combat sports, but. Uh, do you have any fights in the works at the moment, April? Are you in, in, in any camps or is it a bit of time off? Oh, a little bit of time off at the moment, but I do have a fight already locked in for the 23rd of September. Ooh, so, that's not far away. Yeah, so I start my fight camp um, beginning of August and uh, fingers crossed it could be for an Aussie title. So, oh, yeah, awesome. We'll yeah. see. I'm just waiting for confirmation, but yeah. 
Fantastic. And and when did when did combat sports start for you? Oh, honestly, it I it wasn't until after uni. So I kind of finished um, school, uni, uh, got that out of the way, and then I was kind of got hooked on training. Like it it was a bit bit of an accident. Um, I just did it for fitness, and then I loved it. Kept training. It was a natural progression, and decided why am I training so hard. So I thought, yeah, why not give fighting a crack? Right on. So when 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 you say training, so that 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 started with, you know, like boxer size classes, you know, kick and pat, or like hitting yeah, pads, or it, it you started know? with a kickboxing class. Yeah. Um, and basically all we did was kick pads the whole time. So it was, I guess, a fitness kickboxing class. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just loved the intensity of it. And as I progressed, I wanted to be no, be more technical. And that's why I decided to go to Thailand mm. to expand my knowledge and, yeah, just grew from there. Yeah. Wow. And so how long were you guys actually living in Thailand for? I was only there for a month camp. Okay. But he was there for – Ben was there for yeah, a year. Yeah, I, I was living oh, there for, wow. for a year. And then, yeah, that's uh, – I met April in that time and I was going – Coming from uh, Thailand to Australia, like back and forth, right. for, we did long distance for for a bit, and then I just made the move. And so, how old were you when you made the move to Thailand? Uh, I was like twenty four. Yeah, twenty four. Right. Yeah, right. I was twenty four. And what was that like? Sort of a uh, bit of a how how did the opportunity sort of come about for you uh, to? So Tiger Muay Thai, they put out on the internet they they were doing a tryout for uh, the professional MMA team that they're having. So it was um, five spots. They had 20 people come out, um, so you had to be invited to come on tryouts. So oh, okay. Throw in your applica- ap- application and and um, wait for them to say, you know, if you want, if you can come or not. Um, I got I got the invite to come. You know, I had to pay myself uh, airfare and everything to, right. to get out there. So I was working full full time job at times. So I was like, man, I quit mm. everything. Mm. I sold my car, I sold Big my decision. motorcycle. I went, yeah, I just I was like, dude, I'm. I'm all in. Let's yeah, do it. boy. Yeah. yeah, and made the team, and yeah, just, I started living there for a bit, and just trained, and met April. It was good. Did it? Um, awesome. Was it like much of a, a mental process? Like, obviously, that those are some pretty big decisions, you know, when you're just basically selling everything off and and heading off to a completely foreign country to live a totally different, you know, existence. Almost was that was that intimidating? Was that sort of like you jumping in yeah. the deep end for this dream? Like, yeah, for for sure. Because I was I was climbing the corporate ladder for a long time. I was getting you know paid pretty pretty good and i was like man i just i could just stay here and buy a house raise family yeah. you know, have a simple life but at the end of the day it just was like D- is this what i want to do for the rest of my life i was like no nah, i i really love doing martial arts so i was like you know I'm, this this is now or never type of thing yeah. so i gotta yeah. do it now and um i just couldn't look back on the on that time and be like you know what if what if i made that team what if i stayed mm, yeah. there you know and like i'm so glad i did cuz i almost didn't go I, I was broke at the time so i was like man i can't even afford to to pay for a, a one way ticket there mm. so i you know i even put up like a like a gofundme account um you know i sold everything you know got enough funds scraped together and went went there and and, and i did it that and did you awesome. um did you have a lot of sort of naysayers and things like that telling you don't think it through and and don't go through this like how was your family with you yeah my mom and dad were were pretty um they're pretty like as parents do i suppose yeah Yeah. don't don't go over to because because being my my parents vietnamese in thailand is very close by yeah then you know that that area is kind of it's a bit dangerous a bit bit dodgy you know Mm -hmm. so they were like don't go to thailand that's that's crazy you you know (laughs) you have a job you're doing good you know stay here yeah you know, I had to do what I wanted to do, so that's yeah. it. That's it. And was that like a? What, I guess we. When did you start watching mixed martial arts? You know, like when would you sort of look at that and go, "That that's that's what I want to do right there." I was probably when I was um, eighteen, um, just getting out of high school. Um, I just got my black belt in Taekwondo. Right. And I was like, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a pretty tough guy now. <laughs> I, can take any, I can take anyone. So there's like some local shows going on where you literally show up the day of, and uh, and they're like, you're gonna fight this guy in jeans. What? <laughs> yeah, this guy's wearing jeans. In, and an, in an MMA you. fight. <laughs> in an MMA fight. <laughs> yes. Oh. In a, like this Jeez. little cage, like it was like half the size of his room. 
Literally, mm-hmm. it was like a little, little fought in a fun little little yeah. spec. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, back in the like back in the fairgrounds. So God it was, um, damn, yeah, it was crazy. So. That is crazy. And what um what, what like weight divisions or. Yeah, they would just try to match you up as they would put <laughs> you on a scale. Just yeah. eyeball it. Yeah, the eyeball, eyeball test. Yeah, you look about the same. <laughs> really? That's God it. damn, yeah. that is that is so gutsy on your behalf, though. You know, like I mean, I just I don't know, like you must have been I burning just want, for it. I wanted to do. Yeah. Like, I was like, dude, I would really want to go in there and prove myself. Right, and and just the Taekwondo black belt. Yeah, to, to go I'm, in with. Yeah, I went in there and um, I got as in not. Fucking Taekwondo black belt. That'd <laughs> yeah, be yeah, yeah. Awesome. Coming itself, from the guy who did two uh, yeah, boxing yeah, classes yeah, exactly. at Northside Boxing. He'd get his ass kicked in <laughs> boxer size. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's, I mean, to I, a multi disciplined thing like MMA, that, that's crazy yeah, to go Yeah, well, with. I mean, I got I, I got taught a lesson because I got taken down by a wrestler and yeah, we're in right. a choke. So right, that, okay. that made me want to go out and start learning other martial arts. So I was like, it brought me way back down. And, right. Yeah. And uh, I, was, I was so, I was like, I was so um, into trying to find out you know where where to train, where I mean, what styles to train. You know, judo, Brazilian jiu jitsu, Muay Thai, like oh, all these different shit. styles. Like, and that's when I got the bug. That's when I started training all these other things. And I was I was just like, man, this is this is awesome. You yeah, know, this is so much fun. Yep. And and, and does the does the martial arts of of Taekwondo, which is obviously very kicking based and all that sort of stuff, does that transfer quickly into the other martial arts, or is it sort of like grassroots, you know, like start from scratch all over again type thing. I think what it taught me was how to use my body in, in, in the correct manner, like how to balance, how to throw, like how to be standing on one foot and like kick something, how to shift my weight, throw punches. Um, it just taught me how to use my body mechanics. Um, mm. Just, just you know, you could get someone off the street that hasn't done anything, like maybe like just like a like a field sport or something. But like People are just really uncle. They don't know mm. like they're... They don't know the reach. They don't know how to, um, you know, how to jump and kick or whatever. Um, I just feel like Taekwondo just helped me learn how to balance and and just know how to like kick, kick like, yeah. over my head and punch and oh, you know, hit targets and stuff. And I feel like that, like the Taekwondo had helped me. Um, it helped me like uh, really good with my vision. Like I used to be able to like hit like pads like held up like in front of like like way in front of my head and stuff and uh, like i used i used to do all that stuff so um i think going back now like it's just like it's helped me like hit targets like really yeah easy, without even looking at something. yeah like, boom reach out and grab it definitely well i, I think even jo- joe rogan has a, almost like a similar sort of story about he similar deal like started out in taekwondo or whatever and and, and talks about that you know uh same sort of deal. Like I think he sort of was like an uh, American US Open, uh, US Open yeah. champion or, or something like that, and mm. um, you know did Muay Thai for the first time and was just getting teed off in the face, and you know r- realized I need to learn this, and then mm. did Jiu Jitsu and realized that you know people were submitting him, and I need to learn this, and and is there I suppose coming from like the US environment where wrestling and stuff like that is is obviously part of your your school sort of sports program over there is it or not yeah. not in their young years or in yeah young years all, so. all, all the way through so like from elementary school uh, primary school you can wrestle up until col- uh, college like uh, university and stuff right and were you ever involved in wrestling i wasn't and yeah. i kicked myself in, in the butt for that <laughs> for not doing because i had the opportunity to do it like coaches were trying to get me to to, yeah, uh, to wrestle and stuff because I was so small. I played football and said gridiron. Yeah, can, can you believe it? <laughs> 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 Tiny five foot five. I, I, I feel you, bro. I, exact same. I tried to play football, but yeah, you are just not not designed for it. You know, no. like yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, the the crazy thing that I've always found about uh about your your own physical abilities and and things is is also just finding your niche, though. You know, like is that even though you know. It, obviously, no one uh, sort of has any visuals, but I'm I'm a similar size to Ben, and even though football and all that sort of stuff has never really been my jam, like there's there's also other things that you're that you seem to transfer better into, and I'm sure that you know from watching your fights in general, you know you would have a natural athleticism that would you know transfer into other things really well. Like, is there anything other than Mixed martial arts that your, you know, your martial arts abilities tend to transfer into easily um, or? 
Well, in high school, I did do one year of cheerleading. I was a male cheerleader. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was awesome at it. I was doing like I was doing flips and stuff. Right. Was, yep. Yeah, I was doing like toe touches and lifting girls up over my head and stuff. Oh no shit. Yeah, so like I'm a small dude, so I've I've gotta use a lot of technique to like get those girls up there. Yep. You'd you'd be fantastic Possible. at gymnas- gymnastics yeah. and stuff too, I loved wouldn't it, you? Man. I loved it. Definitely. Transition into a uh, Cirque du Soleil career after, <laughs> yeah. after yeah. five. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, absolutely. And do you do you incorporate um, in your everyday training? Like, do, what does what does sort of training typically look like for you? You know, is it a lot of that sort of style of stuff, like a lot of movement based style training? I would presume, or. Um. I do a lot of I, I do a lot of visualization in in shadow boxing and uh, hitting the bag like just on my own. So like I'll I'll just take an hour and just and move around the bag for 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 an hour and just practice my footwork, practice my balance, practice entries in my punching combina- combinations coming in and the target and getting out, like all that sort of stuff. Like I just feel like um, I spend a lot of time just just a lot of repetition on combinations and on my stand up and stuff um but um with with grappling i i spent a lot of time just drilling experimenting like just i i'll partner up with uh with a, with somebody that uh that uh i'm really good good training partners with and i'll just you know, we'll just drill stuff good drill techniques and just work on things and we kind of like um play around, like, see if this works, you know, put this arm, arm under here and stuff and mm. just have a play around and, and it's fun. Yeah. Is there a, um, a strength and conditioning component to your training or it's mostly just fight stuff? Uh, mostly mostly conditioning um, with the strength stuff. Like, I feel like I don't, um, I don't need to do a lot of strength just because I'm, I'm just naturally strong mm. as it is. Like, I have troubles. Uh, I have more trouble if I'm just as being in a good 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 shape, good cardio and stuff. So I spent a lot more time just doing aerobic stuff. Right. Which has really helped me ever since I started doing like long runs and just the long distance stuff. Like I'll, like, like I'll, I'll hit the bag for like an hour and, and just maintain like a nice, easy, slow pace. And do you have like a, like obviously in a, in a fight camp and stuff like that, there's a bit of a science to the way the whole training set up and everything like that. Are you sort of going through different yeah. phases and paces and things like that? Or? Yeah. So I've, I've got a program set up for me that, kind of scales like goes from lower intensity and starts scaling like once I hit that eighth feet eighth week fight week it gets really tough and right and um and then yeah. you sort of pare it down a little bit as you're coming into fight yeah or? yeah I, I have a I have a week like w- w- where I'm pretty much just staying sharp like mm. just getting yeah. a sweat and then just just resting cause and that would be your fight week or yeah, yeah. that'd be fight yeah. week and April, when will you start for your September fight? When, when, how long does a fight camp usually go for you? Yeah, I normally stick to an eight-week camp. Eight week, um, yeah. Any longer than that, I'm overworked. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I'm over it by fight week. Sure. I'm like, let's get this fight over and done with. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be a bad thing, though. I guess it gives you more mongrel in the ring. But, yeah, yeah eight-week camp, um, I usually... Uh, our training camps are... Somewhat similar in that I do focus on a lot more cardio and endurance, mainly because I do fight more rounds. Mm. Um, even though they are only two-minute rounds, I do fight more of them. So I do a lot of endurance training, a lot more low-intensity training to get my aerobic fitness up. Um, but then towards uh, as the weeks progress towards fight week, um, I, that's when I ramp it up. Right, yeah. And the, the boxing style of training, have you, have you, do you dabble in any of the the mma stuff like i mean have you ever sort of thought thought about that yeah absolutely actually before i met my coach i was doing a bit of mma um the reason i started going to a boxing gym was because i couldn't find too many mma uh fighters or people training mma that had good striking skills so that's why i went to a boxing gym so i could get that striking component because in a way i kind of missed it just moving from muay thai to mma i just really want to still hit someone (laughs) so (laughs) punch someone in the face right on Um, but mind you um i did learn a lot in bjj wrestling and i thoroughly enjoyed it i mean i miss it and I would love to get back into it, but at the moment I'm just focusing solely on boxing. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Uh, and and you'd, I mean, not to this one will probably get you know flogged. The dead horse has well and truly been flogged on this one, but 
what are your thoughts on obviously being a boxer? You know, the whole Conor McGregor, you know, Floyd Mayweather situation. You know, like how does how does that unfold in your opinion? Oh, it's a money fight. That's it all is. it is. Yeah. It is. But you know what? Hate it or love it, you're gonna watch it. Yeah. You, you we'll just all be there. Out. It's, it's, it's the absolute spectacle of it all. It, it really is. I mean, we've sort of if you t- they're talking like the real boxing fight at the moment with Canelo Alvarez, Gennady Golovkin, which is a couple of weeks after that. Yep. We've just seen Jeff Horn, Manny Pacquiao in Brisbane, which I definitely want to touch with on you guys as well. But in terms of uh, in terms of that McGregor Mayweather fight, we're all watching and everyone's going to cash in, and it'll be mm. great. But I think we might. The potential there is to move on from it pretty quick after mm. it happens as well, and we kind of get back to his game, do, doing what he loves and doing what he knows best. Have they ever? Have we ever seen something like this before with like crossover disciplines in? Didn't I, I'm pretty sure that someone uh, Ali might have like had a uh, like a, a showcase fight with someone way back in the day. Don't quote me on the name, <laughs> but you know, like, I mean, you know, we're going Fact well check. well back, but. Um, <laughs> But was definitely a freak fight back then for obviously it wouldn't have been MMA, but you know something to do with a crossover of martial arts competing against yeah. each other. But well, here haven't we seen like two NRR players fight each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. exactly. Cool. That's becoming more yeah. and more frequent these yeah. days as yeah. well too. Where they'll dabble in the off season in, in a bit of boxing to stay in shape. But interested to get your guys' take on Manny Pacquiao, Jeff Horn last weekend. I uh, enjoyed the fight thoroughly, but it. A wave of controversy afterwards where me personally, I was at a bar, had been drinking. He's a Brisbane boy, passionate Australian sports fan. I was behind Jeff. But I thought personally he won the fight. It was almost a tale of two fights for me. As I thought Jeff started really well and then Manny had his, had his moments late in the fight. But in terms of them talking a robbery and stuff like that, I thought it was such a, a really busy fight where what probably wasn't the easiest fight to score. But in my opinion, I thought they got it right. Yeah, look... All, all props to Jeff. I mean, he did an amazing job. I mean, from what I saw, I, I thought Manny could have had it um, with the decision. I thought it maybe should have been a split decision instead of a unanimous mm. decision. Um, look, it's really hard to tell. I mean, Jeff was doing great, but then again, um, Manny really didn't show up either. So it's... You know, it's hard. I would not want to be a ref, and I would oh. not want to be a judge. Who who appoints those judges? Are um, they are they like the WBO? A, I believe. Yeah. So yeah. do the WBO appoint local people for that? Like, no, is there a panel were, that they, they get to American. select from? Two or? Americans and one right. Argentine. Yeah. So that that whole you know, it can't just be a th- you know someone home, from, home someone crowd from decision. Ke- Kedron Wavell and you know no. Banyo that you know like <laughs> just like yeah the home yeah, team. Yeah, go the Hornet. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 unanimous. Yeah, Hornet yeah. for sure. <laughs> so there is some sort of like r- ruling on how they get their judges and yeah, all that absolutely. sort of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure you can't have more than one home judge um, on the panel. So. Gotcha. Yeah, there, were, there was a rematch clause in that fight, but talking about November, if they were to fight outdoors in Brisbane in November, it's going to be a pretty warm occasion oh. there too. Oh. 35 <laughs> degrees. Oh, oh, it w- w- would be tough, but uh, I- I'm not sure if they will make that fight again. If they were to play it back, I'm definitely going to watch it again. I thoroughly enjoyed that first one, so mm. r- roll it back. But Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and the the lead into fights, you know, like I guess you know you you've both had you know a whole a whole a range of different oppo- opponents, but is is the build up, uh, you know, like a, an animosity, I suppose, for getting in a fight with somebody. Is that you know, again, back to the helpful versus hindrance sort of thing. Like it, you 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 both, you know, the the fights that we've watched on on thing. Obviously, they don't do a lot of you know like the the lead-in sort of type interview type thing in the in the the female scene as much as they should. But, um, you know, you seem to be a very calm person, you know, like from from sitting down and, and you too, April. Um, do, you, do you get worked up, you know, like before your fights or is it sort of like something where you try and stay nice and calm on purpose? Yeah, I guess um, I'm a really calm person, but I feel like I need something to really, I, I'll, like I'll, I'll be a really nice person, but like, like at home, I'll just be like swearing, like I'm gonna punch that guy in the yeah, face, I'm gonna like okay. gonna choke him out and stuff, and <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. But um, yeah, I, I I just I guess I kind of need that like to to get me fired up, just yeah. to just to keep me going through fight camp and stuff for just sure. Because like, yeah. yeah, I mean from from everything we've seen, you've got quite an aggressive style in, in the aggressive. ring, like, and it's and it's kind of like this uh this 
almost a contradiction with how sort of chilled out and, and calm you are. So it's like... Yeah, yeah. so I, I used to be like just going there, you know, first round, just put everything on the line. But now it's, I've kind of scaled back a little bit. Um, my last fight was just, it just happened just out of, I think autopilot was just... Instinct, just yeah, instinct yeah. Everything was just, everything just went just... Two T just went smooth. So. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely, and and you know you you've got to be. I mean, w- we are, and and all of Australia absolutely should be, but extremely excited about the the proposition that you really propose for Australian mixed martial arts. I mean, we've got you know uh, another guy, obviously Ro- Robert Whitaker, who is yeah. is fighting you know the on in the main event this weekend against Yoel mm-hmm. Romero, which by all intensive purposes will be a guaranteed title shot. If uh, if he is able to get it done, and and Ben, you for are the interim middleweight for champ. the interim middleweight title, and and Ben, you are surely not far away. Yeah, getting close, surely I not far like, away. Oh. Yeah, and that and that must be exciting, you know, to to be in that position where you know in that division where you've got arguably you know the the greatest of all time, you know, who who sits at that mm. throne, but you know to to be motivated like to well the, you mentioned before to to go chasing it on no money and over in thailand and all that mm. sort of stuff you you have to that has to be so close you can taste it at this point yeah i mean I, when i started doing this it was no there was no featherweight division no bantamweight division no flyweight division so it was um to be you know fighting my natural weight fighting in the ufc and getting close to that championship belt man like i've i've never I never even dreamed about this, like, just starting. So, like, to be here doing this now, it's like, it's, feels like a dream. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'll bet. And, and back to, the, I guess, what you just said then about, you know, being the, the, the weight division that you're at. I mean, there, you know, yesteryears before, obviously, those weight divisions really got opened up in, in the UFC. And, and the, the, the WEC obviously pioneered some of those, you know, lighter weight classes. But a lot of even the, the original pioneers of the, the WEC, like, your, uh, you know, your Raya Fabers, who this weekend just got inducted mm. into the UFC Hall of Fame, um, you know, they're, they're well known for, for fighting well out of their weight divisions, you know, like up, a di- you know, up one, two divisions at times, you know, have, is that sort of, I guess, your early career as well? Yeah, of, like yeah. I, I fought, I fought Bantamweight, I fought Featherweight even. Yeah. True. And yeah. But yeah, we had to, because there's no, no, no smaller guys to fight. It was, yeah. It was really, uh, really shallow. And now, now it's just so popular. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so the 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 cutting that you have to do to to come in is that sort of something that's particularly difficult for you, or is it sort of something because they're talking about um, the criticism of the the UFC weight divisions anyway is that there's there's a lot of big gaps in be, in between those divisions in terms of mm. that you know that it's it's a struggle sometimes for some of those you know people that are a little bit in between you know where where they could sometimes sort of fit somewhere in the middle is is that sort of that 125 division, is that sort of, you know, bang on for you in terms of a weight cut? W- it, could you go down one if there was sort of 10 pounds lighter? Mm. Um, I, I feel like I, I'm pretty bang on. I'm, I know there's a lot of flyaways that cut even further and wow. they're huge. <laughs> like I, I'm, I, I consider myself like a pretty decent sized flyweight, but there are mm. people that cut. Like I walk around maybe at 60, 64 kilos. Some people cut from like seventy plus mm. down to fifty seven, and Scary. that's a killer, man. Yeah. Like, I don't know how they do that. Um, when I when I fought Tim Elliott, it was funny. We got we we uh, we go all, all put on on t- into this room before we have to get onto the bus to go to the venue, and there's like a scale in that room, and like Tim Elliott goes onto scale. He he looks at the scale. He he yells out. 162, I think that's like 162. Wow. 37 Jesus. pounds. Jesus, yeah. Yeah, uh, 162 is um, pounds. But yeah, but how many uh, kilos? kilos? That's, that's like, got to be... That's, I don't even know what that is. 162, like it's got to be like 73, 70. 74, something like that. 73.4. There you go, but yeah. Yeah, he said it in front of me. He knew I was in there, so he's trying, trying to like... Jesus. Yeah, psych you out. Psych me out. Fuck. Um, <sighs> Yeah, I was like, "Holy shit! Like, how's how's how's, how's he do that? Possible? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> crazy." And is there is there, there there must be a science to it, you know? Like, I mean, like, d- d- is there th- a lot of weight cutting in in the female division as well, or you know? It's uh, I guess uh, females is a little bit different. Um, we try to not cut too much, but I do know of females and also in the MMA that 
do have to cut a lot um, to reach the weight division, especially in MMA. There's only really straw weight, and then the next one's bantam weight. So Cyborg. that is a huge gap. It's a massive gap. You're absolutely yeah. right. That's one fifth. Uh, you know, for the American scale, that's one fifteen to one thirty five, isn't it? That's right. And I'm an in between. So if I were to fight MMA, I'd have to either think of going up a division or cutting a lot to get down to straw weight. Mm. So. And as a female, that's something you want to try and avoid. It's not as easy for us. So at the moment, I probably cut maybe four kilos max. So it's yeah. nice and easy. But yeah. And you do that with like a water loading um, process or? No, actually, um, I actually haven't tried water loading right, before. Right. But essentially, I, I just naturally. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I nah. just cut it naturally. What is, what is water loading? I don't even know what that is. So what you do in the following days of your weigh-in, like you probably do this, um, probably a, some people do it like a week out from the, the weigh-in. So they'll, they'll just drink um I think it's like a couple gallons, which is close to eight eight liters of water a day. Oh, so they constantly they they you shit. know they carry around like this big jug of water around around the whole day, just drinking it, peeing, drinking it. It just gets your body to just pee, 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 and yeah. Once um, you know, once once you hit weigh-in day, you just cut the water completely so your body keeps peeing, oh, trying to get rid of water right. and stuff. So it can it can expel. More fluid than your body otherwise would have, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just gets that yeah. hormone. I, I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, I'm not sure the science behind it, but there's something like you know, loading your body with water does like hormonally your your body will produce different things that then you then drastically reduce the water and basically dehydrate yourself, but you're still excreting all mm. this water. So I guess a lot of your salts and everything like that are going as well. But obviously, in conjunction with that, you're eating a like no carb and no salt and all yeah, that sort no of stuff. Carb but and salt. Low fiber diet, so just everything just runs through you. Yeah, yeah. So, and from a lot of people seem to say too that not every cut is the same. Where some cuts were, geez, geez that was a rough cut. It, the the weight just didn't come off like it did in the two fights uh-huh. previous. Like, have you ever had any ones there where it's like you're getting towards that number and it's or we could be touch and go here and stepping on? I think my first my first fight back at flyweight it's probably about four or five years ago. So there was a big st- I did a big st- stint in. In um, bantamweight division, where I just fought bantamweight, and um, I had to fight at flyweight the next fight, and it was a, it was a huge like it was a mm. big like it was a hard day like mm. we were in the sauna like all day, oh. but you know I was from being at bantamweight for a mm. bit and and that, but like you know I guess for me um, weight cuts have been pretty um, have been pretty consistent like oh I'm at this weight oh this is gonna take me. Three or four hours. Yeah. Do you remember when you got the call from the UFC? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's maybe the other day. It was, um, I was so excited, man. I couldn't sleep that day, that night. They call you directly or do you have a manager that yeah, looks I had after a, your I had fight a manager, deals? Or? Yeah, I had a manager at the time. Um, one of my good mates here, here in, uh, he lives in the Gold Coast, uh, Ben Livingston. And, yeah, um, you know, he, we just, uh, he just called me up. He was like, hey, man, I got the call from the UFC. He was like, I need you to come down to the Gold Coast today and sign shit. for was Like, holy oh. shit! I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And I got to the Gold Coast from Brisbane yeah. in 42 minutes. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Actually, man, I got to pick up some cat litter. So yeah. can we make it tomorrow? Like? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. All I had was a motorbike at that at that time. I didn't even have a car. I just flew down to the Gold Coast, met at some restaurant, signed some, oh. signed some, signed like it was like a like a big big thing, like big stack of papers. Yeah. And um, just you know, a couple of signatures, but yeah, we got we did. And I was like, read every single we're page. Of we're it. in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably not. I so had like claws in there, but I <laughs> sell my soul to the devil or something. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> Dana gets my firstborn. Child. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and what was that like? Was there sort of like a. I don't know, like a tangible feeling, like leaving yeah. that, that meeting there where, you know, all of this stuff behind you, the, le- leaving your home in South Dakota and, and taking a chance in Thailand uh, absolutely. and everything it you were like. It just felt like I, I made it. Like mm. I coalesced yeah. it. I into got one. There. Yeah. It is. It's yeah. the bright lights that all professional fighters, the UFC is the pinnacle at this point yeah. where other organisations are starting to close the ground, but to be that UFC fighter and even now to work yourself into the top 10 of the UFC division, mm. it must be a satisfying point because I'm, a question I'm sure you've been asked a thousand times, the, the Julian Wallace 
hype train. Where <laughs> yeah. T- 20 million, it's over 20 million Instagram, uh, YouTube. For anybody who doesn't know and is listening, explain Yeah, there was a J- Julian Wallace uh, t- tattooed fighter on the Gold Coast. There was a controversial weigh-in where he sort of mean mugging Ben and sort of presses his head in against Ben's head and just sort of the that sort of douchebag vibe and... Ben comes out the following night, 24 hours later, and uh, slept him. Mm. Early, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Didn't lay a finger on Ben, but uh, that, that video has gone fucking insanely viral. Like, oh, that, yeah. that is everywhere. Mm. And it, mu- it must be satisfying now, though, where everyone's, oh, that Ben 10 guy from the video, to know now Ben 10's got his own legacy in the UFC where yeah. he's riding mm. a, a nice win streak, getting himself towards that 12 pounds of gold around your waist. Yeah. And I'm going into that first UFC fight. Like, I knew I had to back that video up. You know, I, 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 I knew everyone knew me from that video. You know, they're like, oh, this guy just knocked out this guy or whatever. Good versus evil. Yeah, good. Up. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, let's see if he can really fight. And that's that's kind of the pressure I had going into that fight. It was like, I, I had to back myself up. Th- and that fight was in Adelaide? Adelaide, the debut? yeah. Yeah, that was uh, Mark Hunt Stipe. <sighs> Mark Hunt Stipe, yep. They've also... Uh, Want to ask what it was like the walkout at Etihad Stadium? That it must have oh, been. Oh, one eighty three. It, it is a an enormous stadium down in Melbourne that was headlined by Ronda Rousey, Holly Holm. What, what a night that was, and what a what a card to be able to Amazing. say that you'd fought on mm. in that piece of history. But that that stadium itself, it must have been a buzz walking out in front of that many it people. It's so big, man. It made the octagon look tiny, and octagon's not yeah, true. not small. It's huge, and um, kind of. Uh, uh, last week's fight, uh, Manny Pacquiao, Jeff Horn, it reminded me of that. It was, it was like Suncorp mm. Stadium with the little boxing ring. But the boxing yeah. ring is not that small. Like you go into it, it's like, wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was like, it was going out there. It was just, I just remember feeling so open, so just so open to the world. It was like, wow. We go into the octagon, you know, yeah. into the small space. Yeah, <laughs> and, w- when, and when you st- when you're standing backstage for something like that, and you know you're about to to walk out in front of that many people, are, are you are you shitting your pants? You know, like, or are you are you sort of back there and you you focused, or are you back there stressing yeah. out, or like, what what's the the thought process that yeah, goes into that for people bit, that don't l- fight? A little bit of both, you know. You kind of like, wow, it might. Am I getting? Am I really going into getting locked into a cage to go punch someone in the face or get punched in the face? Mm. Like, holy crap! But I guess like you think you're thinking that the two weeks in advance up until then, and then for me, I get so sick of thinking that way. I'm just like, let's just go and fight. Like, there's yeah. nothing left I can do but the fight. Like, I there's nothing I can do. Like, I can't do any more training. Yep. And stuff like it's not gonna make me better. Like, I just gotta go in there and fight. And then I guess for me, like when, when I when I see my name up on the like my pick my 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 profile and I, you know how like has, get, mm. has a two people like matched yep. up and like yeah. talking yeah. in the arena, yeah. Or yeah. tail of the tape. Yeah, the tail of the tape. <laughs> I'm like I see that, I'm like, wow, this is this is Shit what real. I dreamed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is where I belong. This yep. is this is it and I love it, man. So I get you, pumped up. And you're, you're running down that runway and that's just, you know, euphoria or that's just, you know, like, I mean, just adrenaline or... I've gotten to where it feels nothing to me. It wow. It feels just, I'm, I'm just Home. neutral. Just, yep. I'm just walking out. Just, just going just, to do your job. Just slapping hands with everyone, you know, on the sides, you know, and then go, just going there and just getting business done. That's, that's it. unreal. Yeah. <laughs> and, what, and what about you, April? Like, is it sort of when you're stepping out to... To obviously throw down, you know, like with another opponent, is there is there fear involved for you, or again, it's something that you know, no, I've prepared for this. I'm, I'm game on. Like, let, let's do it. Yeah, I think it goes in waves for me. I mean, uh, I guess um, the day of, that's when I get nervous. In the lead up, I, I don't really think too much about it, but it's playing the waiting game until nighttime and having that evening fight. I mean, you're just waiting around at home. You can't do anything because you've got to reserve your energy. So you're just sitting at home, you know, sp- like trying to spend um, whatever time that you can, watch TV, mm. you know. But um, once you're there, I think that's when I calm down. And that's when I'm like, okay, I'm here. Mm. Let's, let's just do this. Mm. So that's when I switch on. And yeah, ready to go. Yeah. yeah, and and how long in advance do they do they get you guys to to turn up at the venue? You know, for before, before you fight, how many hours or minutes are you there prior to? I I like to be there um, like well in advance because I I don't like rushing. The last thing I want to do is mm. rush for a fight. I have that done before actually, and um, the fight before me. 
they got submitted um, first round. It was the MMA show and I was not ready. I was, they were expecting them to go five rounds and it was done in the first round and I was like, damn it, I haven't warmed up at all. <laughs> That's the worst. Wrap yeah, my hands, damn it, wrap my hands. It's the worst <laughs> feeling ever because you don't feel prepared when you go out. And we just did quick speed pads and then out we went. Mm. So... I still came out with the win, but yeah, I hate that rushed feeling mm-hmm. where you, you feel under prepped and not ready to go. And so you talk about preparation and training and obviously like a huge part of any sport is the, is the physical side of training, but is there a lot of sort of, do you have mental coaches or anything like that that you... Yeah, so I've had a mental coach for my last two fights and it's just changed everything for me. Like I've, I've right. been able to really calm myself down and just... Just be in the moment, be calm, and and so what does that actually entail? Like, are you meeting with somebody to do yep. mental drills, or like, how does it work? So my mental coach lives in Connecticut, in the United States. So we we meet over Skype right. once a week, and we just he just asks me questions like, hey, what'd you do over the week, and you know, what, how'd you feel, and it uh, just those questions help you remind you of what you actually did because sometimes you forget. Uh, right, you, know, you do all this training, but. You feel like at the end of the week you feel like you haven't got anything done, but then you look back and on paper it's like, wow, I did, you know, I did a million right. sit ups or whatever. Mm. Um, you know, I sparred a bunch of times and I did awesome. And um, he just, we'll, we'll do. Um, he's a hip hypnotist as well, wow. so he gets me to really relax and and um, visualize being in the octagon without being there. So. Um, it helps me prepare to be in there uh, like a million times, and I just get used to that. And so when when you finally get there on, on fight day, it's not a big surprise. You see all these bright lights, you see all the people and, and everything, but you've imagined it in your head like a million times, so it's not a surprise to you. Mm. And it's not only your conscious mind thinking of it, it's it's your subconscious as well. It has yeah. a lot to do with, with how um, it releases hormones and... Um, stress levels and stuff like that, because if you're if you're if your subconscious picks out something all it's like, like the the shape of the octagon isn't the same as what I trained in, it's gonna it's it's just it's just subconsciously knows that and you it starts to release stress hormones and mm. you start yeah. to expend more energy and yeah. you get tired faster. So, I try to keep everything um, the same as what. Uh, what I so I train in everything I fight in. So my shorts, my mouth guard, I'm wearing the same box as when yep. I fight out there. I actually had the same color shorts as as I fought last fight, so it was perfect. And the same training partners were in my corner, so nice. it was like um, yeah, everything was the same. And that's not like a superstition thing for you. That's like no, visualization, it, so that you know, yeah, it's just I've done this a thousand times. Yeah, it's just to get your to brain your mind get your brain used to all uh, it's like this is just another day for you mm. don't freak out mm. and that visualization just helps you be in that in that environment without being there and so what sort of like uh like a visualization drill is it sort of like you know you're imagining everything from like the way that your hands look to like you know what marks are on the mat and all that yeah. just trying to get as detailed as you possibly can yeah or? so you know he does the whole thing you know three two one boom and just super relax and just imagine your training partners see see their faces see your see your hands getting wrapped see the gloves being, getting put on you know what you're wearing and in the in the back changing room you know you're walking out you see other people and you know you step into the octagon whatever and then ding the bell goes and you fight and mm. you imagine and then he's like imagine you're Imagine you knocking out your opponent, you know, whatever. It could be, could be whatever that you want to imagine. Yeah. Mm. Like, if I see myself submitting the next guy, like, I'll, I'll, I'll try to aim for that. And, and that doesn't, you don't then sort of get attached to um, visualizing it going down a certain way so that obviously a fight, you know, it can go any, any number of ways. And if something yeah. goes against what you visualized, does that, that sort of throw you off or that sort of all worked into um, the process? So, for me, I've, I've got multiple different... Vis- visualizing right, so like right. one like submitting a guy or one okay. knocking some guy out yeah. really fast or something um i think I'm, i think i just do it automatically i just mm. think of every scenario that could happen and i think about that and 
Like no, nothing really surprises me. Yeah, anymore. it's in, it's interesting what you're saying about the um, conscious and un, uh, subconscious attention because we were actually just talking about it before oh, the yeah, podcast. Wow. I was um, I'm reading like a, a Carl Jung book at the moment, who's like you know the analysis of dreams and everything like that, and he uses okay. the the analogy of consciousness like. So basically your subconscious and conscious mind is all one thing and he uses the example of, you know, when you're talking about something and then you forget what you're talking about mid-sentence but then within like, you know, 10 seconds you'll be like, oh, that's, that's what I was talking about and he says it's like a, like a spotlight basically is your conscious mind, right? So it only has a certain amount of stuff that it can sort of illuminate at one stage mm. but all of that other stuff is still in your subconscious mind so obviously you, you know, going through all of this stuff you might be... Um, you know, walking out into the octagon and you're slapping hands with people and that's where your conscious mind is. But obviously you've got this depth of knowledge behind you because of all this, you know, mental coaching and visualisation that you are basically at home there, you know, every, every single sort of way that it's going to go. And it seems to be like a common thread amongst successful people in general, but particularly athletes. Mm. And, um, and yeah, mate, no, no surprise that, wow. you know, with, with the way your career is going at the moment mm. that, that that's playing a big part. How did you connect to the mental coach? If he, he's in Connecticut, is it something that another fighter has referred on or is it uh, someone no, that you've known just, from back in the day? He just picked me out on Instagram and he just messaged me. He was like, hey, Ben, you know, I'd be interested to work with you in, in exchange for some, you know, social media yeah. um, posts and stuff. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Like, what do I got to lose? So yeah. like, right. Do you want to shout out his Twitter name for some yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> is that free, free coaching? <laughs> at, at Fight Brain. Right. Oh, yeah, right, Fight right, Brain. So right, he right. he's like specializes in, yeah. in fighting. Yeah. Fight, fighting athletes. He does. That's you know, awesome. He does jiu-jitsu himself, and he's got a few different clients. I think he's worked with um, Alistair Overeem and Dustin Poirier. Wow, right. 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 a couple of yeah. killers. Alistair's there. another one who. Um, he, he's like he got in with Wim, Wim Hof as well, yeah. doing all the sort of breathing training. He's, he seems open to a lot of different sort of training techniques and stuff. Mm. Have you seen much of Wim Hof stuff? Yeah, I've, 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 I've done a little bit of yeah. research on that and I was like, wow, it's like really interesting because yeah. it's just pretty much like hyper oxygenating. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say it. I can't yeah. Say it. yeah, yeah, tongue twister. Uh, yeah. yeah, super um, just breathing really uh, a lot just to get the oxygen in your blood. And I, I've, I, my, my coach. My my um my grappling coach actually, he does that does a the, does the Win, Wim Hof thing and he, he reckons he can like hold his breath on water for like two minutes or oh. something. Like yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> a buddy of ours um, <laughs> who's fought in a couple of amateur bouts um, for uh, Eternal MMA. Um, he he's right into it, and he can, I think he can do like over three minutes or something like that, holding his breath. But I've given wow. it a go a couple of times, along with like YouTube videos. So uh, Wim Hof basically doing it to somebody else, and me doing it along. But I just feel like I'm about to pass out every time <laughs> I do it. To be getting, honest, getting dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, wake, up on, wake up on the floor. Like, but he's uh, an inc- he's an incredible dude. Like if you um, if you haven't sort of seen what that's about, check out uh, the. Iceman, I think, is the um, is the vice doco on him. But basically, you know, um, these universities in in Stanford and stuff have like injected him with an endotoxin, and he he can prove that he can basically control his endocrine and immune system to overcome viruses and stuff through through this breathing technique. And he does like he's like hiked Everest in shorts, yeah, and, and no shoes or some shit. Crazy. Like, yeah, he's uh, he's a crazy um, from Holland, isn't he? He is, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Same, that's how Overeem would have hooked up with course, him for sure. Yeah. He's a fellow yeah. Dutchman helping him out. But Overeem's a guy who sort of reinvigorated his career a little bit of late too. There was a time there where he took a couple of defeats and I'm sure he's learned from it as well. I've, in watching some of your YouTube, Ben, there was a time where you almost gave away the game at some point, was there? Yeah, it was um, It was actually after uh, a, a win and it was I was defending a belt like up, up in North Dakota or something and... I think I just had so much pressure on that fight uh, that, you know, even though I won, it was awesome. I just couldn't deal with that pressure anymore. It's just like I just took a, like, I took two years off, and I um I didn't fight until my first fight here in Australia. Yeah, uh, two years later, so, wow. uh, yeah. And what was that sort of two years? You, you took some time off fighting in general and then sort of came back to it or? Yeah, so I took some time off and I started, that's when I started working full time for um, like, a, like a tech company. I used to go out to people's houses, install 
um, home theaters and fix right. people's computers right. and stuff. It's called the Geek Squad. <laughs> <laughs> no, shout out. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, Store 17, if you're listening. Shout <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, they are, man. They are, trust me. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I used to drive in like the Volkswagen Beetle. It's like it's like all black and white and stuff. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, One of your uh, customers cops an attitude and calls you a geek. It's like, <laughs> listen, hang on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're gonna catch this right. <laughs> <laughs> you realize you who you're have, talking yeah, to? Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and and what, do, what do you guys enjoy to do outside of your combat sports sort of interests? You know, like what what sort of some stuff that you you like to unwind with outside of that sort of game? Well, we're we're foodies, so yeah, we, like we food. love trying nice. different food. I mean, weight cuts are, I mean, we have pretty good weight cuts, so we're not missing out too much. But there are the certain foods that you just crave. What are they? Oh, I always crave pizza. Yeah, pizza's but I, the shit, <laughs> I never really end up eating it. But this time, made sure that I've had a pizza after my fight. So. Nice Indian food. Yeah, yeah. one of them. Like, yeah, just so tasty. And and so. When you're when you're in, I suppose when you're outside of a fight camp and when you're in it, is is there sort of like a a big difference between how you're eating and and all that sort of stuff? Like, are, are you you typically fairly clean eaters, or just depends? Oh uh, yeah, I think um, you mean outside of out, outside of fight camp. Outside of fight camp, oh, yeah. I try to be. You know, I I, I I I know when I'm eating crap, and I feel I feel it. Mm. So I try to like I'll have like a week after my fight where I just eat whatever I want. Like in a, like, there's no limits. And after that, I just feel like crap and I want to go back and eat healthy again. For sure. Yeah. yeah. We're generally healthy. I mean, we don't really um, – we take a week off training and that's it. We pretty much keep training um, throughout yeah. the year. So there's yeah. no off-season uh, and we pretty much need to – Need to eat healthy. Yeah. Well, I think we were lucky to um, to get our interview with you guys because you guys are six six days a week, and I, I think you'd actually come from training before that. Ben, yeah. So. Just um, <laughs> yeah, I had jujitsu in the morning, and then I ran, like I ran like an hour on on the beach in Redcliffe. Right. Um, yeah. Right. And um, I didn't I didn't I didn't um, want to go for that long, but I was like, I was running, and I was like, I want to get to that point, and I was like. It just took me forever. Like yeah. I was running on the sand, and I was like getting so tired because running on sand is just like, oh, it's brutal on your on your feet. Brutal on your Achilles, calves, and yeah, yeah. Calves yeah. And, yeah. and then I was like, man, stuff this. I'm gonna go back on the the sidewalk. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> get to that point. I got to the point, and then uh, I think my mom Facetimed me. I was like, oh look, mom, I'm at Red Cliff Point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not breaking a sweat, just <laughs> like talking on the phone. And and, and uh, is it like that? Do you have to sort of do you have to rein yourself in, you know, every now and again, or is it, you know, that that uh, one of the the common criticisms of Cain Velasquez is that he he trains too training, tr- too he's too tough for his own good, you know, like he he almost trains himself into that that constant state of injury. Is there an element where you've you've got to kind of Listen to your body and go. No, 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 no. Hang on a minute. I'm overdoing it here. Or, yeah. So I actually have some uh, scientific method in place to look after my um, my training load uh, day by day. So I do oh. a thing called HRV. That's heart rate variability. Oh, and, I think um, I've heard of that. Every morning, I, I I get up. Actually, we get up. We do this thing. Yeah, we do the same thing. Oh, we do very the same good. thing. Very good. Um, you put a heart straight a heart rate monitor on and it reads and um it's just an app on your phone and it reads the the cadence from your heartbeats and it tells you um if you're ready to train today like if you're ready to have a hard day a moderate day or just completely rest day wow. oh, really? technology for, for yeah that. and incredible. is there is there any is there any blood blood work component of that or it's all on your heart all it's all on your heart rate yeah it's all on heart heart rate it was actually designed to look after the the health of russian cosmonauts in space wow um, and um, just got transferred over to um, sport, sports uh, athletes and stuff so god damn the level of light that that we're getting down to with Sports medicine and science and and all that sort of stuff is really it's huge, just man. It's a make the make game. or break, man. Yeah, you, you, you train you train too hard, you you can get to a state of overtraining really easy and just mm. get injured. And yeah, that's like if you get injured, you can't fight, can't fight, can't pay rent. 
Exactly, yeah. and, and and we were discussing before the uh, before the podcast, which which I found really is, uh, interesting, which which you mentioned about um, that that you get really bad hay fever around around certain types of cats, even though you own a couple of cats yourself. <laughs> yeah. But um, but the 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 steroidal um, uh, antihistamines, which I've used before for uh, for for my cat allergies as well. And, and we joked about the whole USADA, you know, um, banned, banned <laughs> yeah. substance list and all that sort of stuff. And and that list is, is a laundry list of, of things that are on there. I mean, what's the, the process to understanding, you know, what's on that list and, and what your supplements are? And, you know, is that a, a, a you know, like a disaster trying to understand that? Have you got someone that understands it for you? What's the go there? Yeah, so when USADA got implemented to the UFC uh, – I, th- I think it was UFC 193 in Melbourne. Um, uh, Jeff Nowinski came out to that show, and he's the head of USADA. And um, he pulled, he pr- basically pulled all the fighters in that hadn't been to the meeting yet prior, um, just educating people like, hey, you know, like this is, this, uh, you guys are going to get tested for this and this and that. And <laughs> here's some resources to look up. You know, if your right. your substance is banned or not, like th- here's some horror stories of, of um, he he pretty much told like a like a story of um, of uh, how drugs can be manufactured. They can they can get tainted really easily, mm. um, just by uh, the facility like not cleaning their instruments. Mm. And um, you know, after that that the first batch of stuff went out, exactly. like the next batch could be tainted from the first batch. So how on earth do you safeguard yourself against that? Uh, you just uh, you just got to be careful. You got to like for me, I take I, I take all on it stuff. Yep. So yeah, uh, little, little, yeah Chris, little, these little, boys know. I man, love I love on it stuff. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah, Chris is putting Aubrey Marcus's kids through college right now. <laughs> <laughs> Chris has got about every. He's shout got the hemp force. Yeah, so you name it. He's, definitely yeah. shout out. They make, make good stuff, man. I'm yeah, they make big, big good fan stuff. of their stuff. Yeah. And, you know, a big company like that um, that's really so tied into the UFC, they cannot afford to have tainted supplements. Cool. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, you know, I asked Jeff about it. I was like, hey, what do you think about Honest stuff? Like, like you know, really, like, you're talking to me. And he's like, oh, Honest, Honest good, man. They can't afford to have their name mm-hmm. tainted. Mm-hmm. Joe Rogan. Exactly, you know, you know? exactly. And, you know, and uh, Cody Garbrandt also is, is on their books as one of their sponsored yeah. athletes. I think... TJ used to be there and, and all that sort of stuff. So you're dead right, man. You know, they, they have a lot of their vested yeah. interest in maintaining that sort of image. Yeah. But stuff like, the, um, you know, the nasal spray that I take, I didn't actually, um, I didn't actually look it up to, I didn't even know it was a steroid at first. Yeah. <laughs> so I was taking it. Uh, and then um, for some reason I was like, oh, man, I should probably look into this stuff t- to make sure, you know, it's not, well, you know, sure enough it's it's a steroid, but I was like, oh, shit. I yeah, like, I think I did, and then I went on to you know the website they they gave me um, to see if it was banned or not, and you know, it's not banned. It's just a just a nasal spray. Ah, <laughs> cool. So there's a website that you can go to where you type it in, and yeah, and yeah, it'll yeah. sort of come back and and tell you what. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. that's cool. I think then. it's our like 401.org or something. Right. Okay. And is that something that's only available to people no, who no. are within the program, or it's available yeah, to the general anyone, public? Anyone can get on there, there and, and see. Yeah, it's just ran by USADA. Anyone can get on there and, and and see if it's banned or not. Yeah, I'm nice. gonna have a play around this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going straight there. That'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, Chris mentioned uh, TJ Dillashaw before. Do you watch much UFC yourself? I know, like using football for example, not not every professional rugby player enjoys sitting down watching games. Do, do you find yourself keeping up with the cards? I, I I'm the same, man. I I don't like to I don't like to watch UFC. I don't I don't like to go out of my way to to watch. UFC, like, if it's on, I'll watch it. Like, you guys had it on, I was like, I was kind of, like, interested. <laughs> yeah, it's the fights. Yeah, it's fights. But um, I guess I don't really go out, like, I don't go out to the bars or anything and, like, and, um, you know, schedule time to go out. And mm. and, and if, it, if it's on, and I'll, I'll watch it, but I won't go out of my way to watch it. So, um, yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah. But, do you TJ keep Dillashaw? keep uh, keep one eye on the division at the same time as well? There's a bit of yeah. controversy at the top of that division at the moment too, where TJ Dillashaw offering to come down and fight Demetrius Johnson, who's champion. Demetrius somewhat reluctant to take that fight. It seems is there from I've, someone who's in that division. Yeah. Do you have do you are you do you side with Demetrius or do you wish he would take that fight? Is there? Yeah, I've actually paid attention to that 
really close. That's the one thing that because mm. it you know it's, involves it's, me. It's, it's huge mm. news for that. It's my believe. livelihood. So exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. I think Dana White was um, saying you know he was he was thinking about getting rid of division for a bit. I was like, mm. that, and that was when don't I was do like, that, Dana. Yeah, yeah I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to eat. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone needs to eat too. <laughs> Thirty-five, um, it is. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, I followed that really closely, and you know, I got really concerned when I heard the news of the flyweight division potentially shutting down. You know, when when DJ went out and said um, Dana was going to do all that stuff if he didn't take the fight, and um, yeah, I, I kind of see it both ways. Mm. You know, I I see it. Um, uh, on a uh, uh, sports integrity uh, uh, side, you know, he pr- probably doesn't deserve that shot. But like on an entertainment side, you know that'd be fun to watch. You know, and, and everyone definitely, will, like, definitely. Then that's from from us as fans, where people, oh, you know, we wish you would take it. Where from his point of view, it mightn't make the most sense in the world. And I could completely see it from there. But us as fans, we want to watch entertaining fights, and that would be yeah. a hell of a oh, stoush if, if and when that ever happened. Uh, both of those guys just super, super exciting to watch. But wh- whichever way it plays out, Demetrius is only one off tying Anderson Silva's record for his mm. for his title. No, I think he's, he has tied it. He has tied it, he so he's looking yeah. looking Next to go one ahead. To beat it. He yeah. wants to beat it. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Which is a, a hell of a feat in itself. So, and and I, I, you're a a bit of I read on your Instagram you're a bit of a uh, a computer game person yourself yeah. is is that sort of like your your outlet sort of outside of outside of martial arts typically or yeah so it's just kind of my way to escape and you know get my mind off off fighting because when I'm in fight camp I'm always thinking about fighting and always thinking about those scenarios what what can happen what what good can happen mm. you know whatever you just you your mind plays games with you sometimes and um it's just really good to get a Get away and escape, and yeah, just you let your mind and what, go. what's your what's your jam? Like, are you uh, like uh, what, 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 sort of, what sort of game? Pl- what yeah, sort of platform yeah, you yeah. on? I play PC. You know, oh, mouse, okay, TV, yeah, keyboard, and mouse. Um, right now I'm playing a uh, bit of Overwatch. I yeah, game, oh, th- no. these guys tap down in video games, but if there was ever a uh, Mario Kart World Championship, <laughs> <laughs> these two guys they here, win it. Gonna, they're, they're podium threats for, for certain. I, I used to have a, uh, I used to have a roommate when I used to live up in Townsville who was a, an avid, avid StarCraft person, and yeah. um, and you know it was, was it Korean. Ah. It, it, man, I, I think he. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that's a, no a, a, a from left field, but I, I think he could have been. You know, um, I, w- I wouldn't know a hundred percent, but um, it was my first probably insight into that world of how deep people can actually get into into video games. Like he used to have no word of a lie, like groups of friends around and there would, similar to we would sit down and watch a, a UFC pay-per-view, they, there was like StarCraft pay-per-views where, you know, the the best of the best StarCraft players from around the world would play, then people would pay money to tune in and watch these people play StarCraft and then, you know, after that was over or whatever, they would, you know, stay up all night, you know, through to the early hours of the morning and they were still going, you know, like, I mean, yeah. it must be some seriously addictive Man. stuff. Profes- yeah, professional gaming is blowing up right now. Yes. Like, it is enormous. You're seeing st- you, are- arenas and stadiums getting yeah. filled up, people were just playing in the middle and, and it's just putting on That's the screen. That's what this was. Eat. And there was, like a hundred, there was like yeah. 100K, like, prize money or something like that for the winner, you Huge know? Like, millions of dollars mm. in that. Yeah. Mark Hunt millions. was a uh, self-professed StarCraft addict back in the day. The oh. Super Samoan, he uh, he absolutely loved it. But the Rob eSports, Whitaker is hard into gaming Rob, as well. Rob, yeah. he is. He, he yeah. loves it too. Where The market's out here for it. Now, you're talking about, you know, we could, the fights are on. Now, we, we could have a bet on who's going to win the main event in the, in the card tomorrow. But the eSports market head-to-head... There is markets for that, so I can I can log on tonight and see who's in this the t- the Tokyo Open playing uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare two in a tournament. I can bet Chris versus Danny head to head who's go- who's going to win and by their method. It's so, unbelievable. So the the guys that are that are competing in those tournaments is it similar to any sort of sport where you know how do you get not how do you get noticed? You know, like, is there, like, a world platform that, that all these players sort of, like, you know, log into and then people get scouted in terms of this guy's k- murdering everybody at this game, you know? Yeah, I think uh, every every game has its own, like, um, like a tournament style, uh, like a ranked system. Right. And you can, you, know, you can make it up those rankings, obviously. And then um, some people 
I think there's some th- there's uh, some gaming teams that have like they'll have they'll they'll have a, their own house, and they'll have their computers set up in the whole room and. Um, they'll just train all train. Like train. They're training. Exactly. Yeah. They're doing train, like yeah. scenarios. Like they're playing out every single scenario that can happen. You know, every 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 player on the team has like a, a certain has a certain um a part in that team. Like if they if they fail at it, like the whole team falls apart. So they've gotta like they've gotta be in sync at all times. Yeah. Well, then, sp- so spe- yeah, speaking of overtraining, that's um like massive there's people that have died from from gaming before yeah. right that that basically neglect to eat and will like you know game for over 24 hours straight and it's actually like a um a really well recognized addiction in some people that you know can't sort of you know balance the rest of their life so it's like mm. it's a crazy yeah thing, man. you can overtrain in gaming as well it's yeah, crazy yeah. thing but yeah and there's I've heard there's drug testing for gaming. True. No, no shit. Way. Yes. He, po- he popped for Adderall. Like yes. That sort of okay. thing. Yeah. Like yeah. Adderall is like a banned substance and stuff. Yeah, right. That's that like crazy. How and, and, and that would pretty much be the, your banned substance. Out of competition or in your, competition? Your banned substance. I have no idea. Probably. Would just be anything yeah, that, yeah. Anything yeah, that would yeah, keep no. you up. You know, like, I mean, because yeah. is, is it right in saying that, you know, a lot of those games that the... The longer you can pretty much sit at the, at the helm, you know, like in an operational capacity, is gives you an advantage over you know other people in terms of, you know, in terms of being able to yeah, you know absolutely. move like, forward. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, uh, more time that you can spend training, doing you know the more reps you can get in. Good the, point. Mm-hmm. Good analogy. There's Ten thousand hours. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. money to be made in the game now too. Websites like Twitch, like Demetrius is a guy. He has a Twitch account where. People are, p- are paying to watch him play video games. Rampage is another one where right. he, he's doing really, really well out of his online gaming profile Shit. in this day and age. So he's, his fighting career has gone somewhat to the back burner where he's still active, but he's not Quentin Rampage Jackson in his prime. But there's plenty of income coming in because mm. people, oh, I, I want to pay 20 bucks. I'll play against Rampage. Yeah. I'll test my skills against him. Oh, where else are you going to get that opportunity to do that other than online? That's Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've actually got my own Twitch account and I've oh. tried it, but Australian internet, internet is so shit. Is Especially it? Brisbane, bro. I cannot, Especially Brisbane. Yeah, I cannot. I, I, it's, it's so stuttery. I can't, I really? can't watch it. Yeah, because it's so terrible. So it, like the, the speed? The speed, bit, like it doesn't yeah, the keep bandwidth. up. No, right. no way. Australian yeah. internet is shout shit out to uh, right. Anastasia Palaszczuk. We need to uh, we need to do something about this NBN. Get that stitch. NBN <laughs> rolling <laughs> yeah. faster, please. Yeah. Ben, ben Ten, fucking yeah. verified. You need yeah. to do something. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be listening to this ben, guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, ben uh, Ten <laughs> needs NBN. <laughs> 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 Hashtag <laughs> baby. <laughs> damn it. Give uh, Ben Ten his NBN. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> far out. So uh, obviously it must have a lot of a lot of media that it needs to like to load in order to to be that slow because from someone that just obviously you know pokes around with the the g- generic sort of internet or whatever it seems mm. okay but there must be gaming internet and then there must be you know just general um, it's internet just, yeah it's just like the the quality like i can stream at like a terrible like it will look pixelated right. and boxy and stuff yeah but you know you don't want to watch like who wants to watch that? Yeah. I want to watch something in HD. Yeah. Good point. Like, I want to watch it in 1080p. And playing yeah. any sort of frames. any sort of first person shooter video game, if there is any sort of lag, it's game over every yeah. time. Good where I always loved my video games, and I might be the worst person of all time to ever play first person shooters. I'm absolutely terrible at those. Where can put in an hours an hours work in the afternoon, and think yeah I, I'm. It's my turn to go online, bank taken out every single time. Where I, I always played theme park on uh, PlayStation One oh, growing up too. Yeah. Remember, you could, you could build build your own oh, like side show alley where you've got your chip shop there. You could <laughs> go get your hamburgers, <laughs> build your own water slide out the back roller coaster. This shit was a one. It's yeah. still available on it's on iTunes now too. Where I caught myself probably 12, 18 months ago downloading it, but it's like oh, you know. You, if you want the water slide, that's going to cost you $3. I was like, oh, man, I want that water slide. All of a sudden, I've spent $30 in a night. I've got this kick-ass theme park, but it's cost me 30 bucks. Those yeah. games, man, they suck you in quick. It does, it does. <laughs> I got free that to, bug, Free man. to play, free to play. Yeah. But you can get in there and it's like, you know, you have to... <laughs> you got to spend, you gotta spend $3 on a water slide. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like, yeah. Man, we're out of cotton candy. $2 to stock it back up, man. Look at all the kids outside. It's, oh, yeah, it's, it's such there funny games. Uh, really get. Yeah. 
Yeah. I remember there was like a flip phone that I had. I can't even remember what brand it was, but it had this game called Disco where you had to, it was basically the same premise, but like your speakers would blow out and you'd be up for a new set of speakers <laughs> and then you'd have to get like the dancing girls and one of them would call oh, in six. So, you know, yeah. But it was like, it was like in the snake era days. So really? it was like groundbreaking. It was, it was entrepreneurial. Like, yeah. Was there like building the sickest disco you've ever seen? Like. <laughs> is, that, is that your jam at all, April? You, you into it at all? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Poor and, uh, April sitting here rolling her eyes. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, that's why Ben's got his own room. So he's got <laughs> yeah. a dedicated yeah. oh, room. He's got a man room. Yeah. Oh, Just for yeah. gaming. My man. Yeah. My man. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Once he's in that chair, I le- let him be. Leave him alone. <laughs> and yeah. who, who gets control of the remote at your guy's house? Like, are you guys into the sort of same, you know, like... Uh, Programs and all that sort of stuff. Fortunately, we are. Yeah. We're, 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 we're into anime, like Japanese. Oh anime yeah, 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 so, yeah. Um, we actually just finished two anime series. Um, well, one of them, the season's finished, and we're still waiting. So, yeah. Attack on Titan is one of our right, yeah, ones that we've been following. And the other one is <laughs> is like some floofy love, like schoolgirl, schoolboy. Right. <laughs> it's actually you, really good though. <laughs> and where, where so do you good. where do you get where do you get into that? Because anime is. Japanese. Yeah, Japanese. Oh, thank God for that. I thought I was about to make an idiot <laughs> out of myself. <laughs> but um, they would be in, in – no, not in English, I presume. That English subtitles or yeah. something English like subtitles, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then so wh- how, do you, how do you get into uh, th- that sort of thing? So you can get a pay subscription like Netflix. It's called right. Crunchyroll. They, they, just, they just do anime um, and some dramas like uh, stuff. But, um, yeah, they, they mainly just do animes and um, you can get – you can get the episodes to come out like really like as soon as they air in Japan, they're out in on Crunchyroll. Right. Two hours later. Yeah. Cool. And that that's a really big thing in in Japan, obviously. So how did yeah. you guys latch onto it? Oh, I don't know. Like I guess who was into it first? Come we on. were both. I think we were both into it. And then oh, then that's cool. When we yeah. found out, we we're like, holy crap! You like? <laughs> <laughs> I need, need to go shopping for a ring here. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. I'm set. <laughs> I guess being a girl, you kind of followed Sailor Moon. I mean, what girl? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sailor yeah. Moon? yeah. Everyone had yeah. cheese TV for all those oh, Brisbane kids it. growing up. Yeah, yeah, we're all same gen. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I kind of grew from there, but I didn't really start getting seriously into it. Um, until after I got into manga. I started reading yeah. manga um, when bo- the old Borders was around. Um, I was just on a break from uni and I just started looking around at different um, genres and I found this area and it had these colourful books um, illustrated and I just picked one up and had a look and I was like, oh, this looks interesting. It's nothing I've ever picked up before. Decided to buy it and I just got hooked. Hooked, no. yeah. Just got hooked. They they have a way of leaving you hanging. Like they, I don't know, someone dies or um, there's a secret that needs to come out yeah. and it's not going to be revealed till the next book or the next volume. So I just kept buying and buying and buying. <laughs> and That's awesome. Yeah, just got hooked that way. And what's the difference between manga and anime? Is is that like the print form and, yeah. the, and the film form? Or? Manga's the print form. Right. Um, so it's similar to your um, comic book, essentially. Sure, yeah. Except it's um, flipped over, you read it backwards, and um, it's all translated from Japanese. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. It's, it's good. It must be good to have sort of like common interests like that. I mean, obviously you've you've got the combat sports, you know, like you've got the anime, but, um, you know, differences, I suppose, in that you've got your man cave for, you know, for crunching away on the computer games mm. while, while you're – is there anything else that, that you're particularly into that's sort of completely separate to Ben that, you know, that you really <laughs> vibe out on or <laughs> – well, Oh. Ben's prompting out yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben, like, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm I, I sensing like there's be... a story. Oh, it's not <laughs> really you don't say it, I'll say it. You don't say it, I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I, I'm a bit artsy outside of, um, I guess, training and fighting. So I make these um, polymer clay charms. Oh, cool. So right. I guess polymer clay is kind of like the plasticky type version of clay and you bake it and it hardens just like normal clay. In a kiln? Oh, just in a regular oven. Okay, yeah, yeah, But yeah. I kind of like make like little characters um, out of them and I put so them on keychains and then I give them to people and... That's yeah. Awesome. She, she made me a ninja bread man, like... Ninja bread. A uh, little charm <laughs> keychain thing for one of my fights, like... Uh, 
she like snuck into my bag. So when I found it, I was like, what's this? That's a awesome. Ninja bird man. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, so unique. Yeah. I can make like little Pikachus and oh. like, yeah, just and, little characters. And do, do you have a, um, is it, is it something that you, do you have a, like a website or anything like that where, where people can purchase these or? <laughs> I don't. Um, you should. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I've, I only started picking it up um, when I, quit my last job to focus on fighting Mm. because I had a little bit more spare time. So like, oh, okay, let's let's try to find another hobby that's completely different to fighting. So I was on Pinterest and just found that these people had these clay charms and I just got intrigued and decided to give it a go myself and I just got addicted. And it's funny because I'm a very like agitated I've, I've got to always be active mm. like I'm very like I can't sit still for too long and it was actually quite relaxing and for the mm. longest time I couldn't find something that made me relax and made me not think about training or fighting so when I found that putting my focus into making these little clay charms then I just kind of like oh you know, I'm in my own little world. I don't have to think about when my next fight's going to be. I can just focus on this. And, yeah, it was actually, like, a really good thing that happened. Mm. You know, I can just actually chill out for once. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I'm getting, like, such a like an interesting picture of your guys' home life with the, oh, the two cats. Is it Tofu and... Tofu and Yuki. And Yuki <laughs> cruising around while you're gaming and oh. you're making clay charms. <laughs> and, That's and, and, yeah. and, yeah. Pretty much. And then yeah. your full-time jobs are, like, full-time murderers. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's 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 cool. Well, look, man, I um, I guess well, look, we'll wrap it shortly. But you know, like one one thing that I'm really interested in is you know the you don't have a fight booked as as far as us as fans probably know at the mm. moment. Um, is there anybody? I know that 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 Benavidez fight was was hooked up at one stage and and that one fell through. But um, is there anybody that that you particularly want to fight in the division at the moment or is it sort of just a case of, you know, like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll take some take on anybody? Like, what, what are your thoughts? Man, I'm, I'm hooked on that Benavidez fight, man. Right like, on. Like, I wanted that fight. Like, right I, on. I, from the start, I really wanted that fight. And, you know, when it fell through, my heart sank, like, a million yeah. miles on the ground. And I, I want to fight him so bad. Like, I feel like that's, like, the fight. And, like, And we want to see you fight him, man. Like, I mean, you're... Your style, especially in that division, is is what that division needs. You know, mm. I know I know you mentioned Amen. before, obviously that you're you're obviously you know like working on obviously that that aggressive approach that you've got, and and certainly it's a fan favorite style. But just you're never in a boring fight, like ever. You know, like all mm. of your fights, you just you bring it. They're all exciting. You know, like you just bring such a a pizzazz to that division that that division is is you know like it. It needs you, man. That that is awesome that you're uh, that you're putting those fights Thank on you. for the fans. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. that's the thing with, and neither is Benavidez. Benavidez no. is one of those active guys where this matchup should it go ahead, one get through Joe Benavidez. There's a title shot there. Joe's been, Joe's been there and, and done that. So get get through him, you get the shot at the glory. But Benavidez is a really really fun guy too. It's a sort of fight where. If all goes to plan, both of you could walk away with fifty thousand dollars at the end of the night on yeah. top on top of that oh. normal purse too. Mm. Which what what an opportunity Guaranteed that would be. Fight of the night. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, absolute, it absolutely yeah. would be, and could potentially headline a card at this point oh, too. Yeah. Something easily, of that nature. Easily, easily, especially because you know that that old adage of of styles make fights and. There is not two better styles that you can put in a in a cage than 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 you two guys, and especially being as as well rounded as you are, you know, from from what we've definitely seen of both of you, you know, you can both really do it all and and do it all really really well, you know. Mm. I mean, something that we I guess probably haven't seen from at least the the small amount of Australian fighters that that we've probably seen in the in the octagon thus far is the the caliber of ground game that you bring to the the octagon you know i mean it's mm. is that something that you've been doing for a while because that that transition game and and ground game that you've got there is some next level shit man man i, I i've always believed in my my ground game it's just happened that my my striking just came to shine a lot brighter right yeah, especially after that Jules Jackal fight. Yeah. You know, knocking him out and stuff. And I don't know, I just, for me, striking comes natural. Um, for grappling, um, 
you know, I, I'll have to work a little bit harder. At it. So I've worked my ass off from, you know, day one of doing, like, 10 years ago when I started doing MMA um, till, till now. And um, I feel like I've spent a lot of time on it. And I've, I've, I've actually felt like I've, my ground game is better than my, my striking game. But, like, the stats don't show it, for sure. Like, oh. I've got no takedowns. Whatsoever, oh. but I can take people down. Like that's not a problem. I did judo, did Absolutely. wrestling and stuff. Like that's that's not a problem for me. It just I just find striking easier, just natural for me. Right, god damn, and that that's a scary proposition when you consider what you can do on the ground and the caliber of people that you can do it to. You know, like I mean, you know that mm. that that Tim Elliott fight. Like Tim uh -huh. Tim Elliott is no fucking. <laughs> uh, pardon me for the French, but is no joke on the ground, ladies and gentlemen. And you just dominated him, you know, absolutely dominated him. That was impressive. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I felt like um, uh, my striking really set that up for that, though. Like, mm. I, I, I hit him so hard in that first couple seconds. Yep. I, see it, like, I threw, like, a left kick, hit him right in the nose. And I, my shin is still sore to this day. It's right. Four weeks later. And uh, my, my shin is sore from that, that first kick in the, se in the first two seconds. And... That that that's what rocked him, and I, you know, made him make make mistakes. I make people make mistakes. I oh, it. absolutely, awesome, man! Yeah, <laughs> boy, 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 oh, oh yeah, fucking oh, yeah. oh, oh, The hair on my back and my neck oh, is yeah. standing on it, just just hearing that. But like, yeah, ben, ben and Chris should have a smoker in the backyard after this. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. Like, uh, uh, one eye on the front door. I'm about to run out. <laughs> No, look, well, we really, really appreciate you, um, you know, taking the time to, to come on and, and, and both oh, of fun. you, you know, like it, it's been really, really enjoyable. And, and Dana, please, please, please get that Benavidez fight done because we, we really want to see it. And, um, yeah. and that Australian title, you know, we yeah. are rooting for you to, to bring that, that title home to Australia because, you know, Australia needs those people like you guys really representing for our combat sports in this country, you know. So, um, Amen. Thank, Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. Oh, it was love, pleasure. We'd pleasure. love so to get fun. you back on when you're uh, when we have the Australian World Champion Ben Wynn. Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Bring that strap to uh, the, World the to the TKO. Amen. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll uh, we'll be back soon. Love you. Peace. Take care. <laughs>